Hello, this is um, Fridays with Anne. This is going to be a series of chats with Anne Verwerke. And we will be discussing topics from homeopathy, questions that I've always had or that other people have, um, yeah, have interest in, have, um, have unclarity about. And I have the chance to ask Anna all these questions. So um, there's going to be a series of these chats. And if you have any question that you would like me to ask Anna, you can send the questions to this. Um, you can post it in the comments, or you can send an email to this account. So first of all, let me greet you. Hello, Anna. Hi, Jost. <laughs> Very happy to have you again. You. And um, last time we discussed um, several topics that have to do with animal cases in homeopathy. And in one of the questions, you mentioned the use of dimension as a way to classify cases or 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 get to a remedy. So I would like you to explain this concept a bit because I've never heard it before. Okay. Yes, I mentioned second uh, dimension cases and third dimension cases. And you probably won't hear it anywhere else because I haven't. And uh, actually it's a little bit of um, a conclusion. I came to myself after seeing so many cases. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say it's it's on an empirical basis. Yes. So what I understand is the second dimension case is, uh, or let me say, let me say, what is the second dimension? Uh, the first dimension being the uh, crystal um, uh, center of the planet Earth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we resonate, mm -hmm. of course, with all dimensions. So our iron and our blood resonates with that. The second dimension is the, the realm under our feet between the, the first and the third. And the third dimension is the surface of the earth where we uh -huh. live, right? Yeah. And then you have fourth, fifth, and et cetera, et cetera. But for the time being, the second and the third will do. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we can uh -huh. talk about other dimensions later. I, I think some say they're nine, some say they're 11, I don't know. But yes, I will note down the topic. It's interesting <laughs> as well. Yeah, there's literature, literature out there, but I think for mm -hmm. homeopathic, pragmatic, practical use, we can do a bit of, uh, differentiating our remedies mm -hmm. between the second and the third dimension. So the second yeah. dimension is what lives under our feet. That's yeah. put it in the most simple way. It's the realm of the, the, the minerals, um, the elements, the ores, the stones, the gemstones, uh, the bacteria and maybe the viruses. So it's uh -huh. the, the, everything that lives there under our feet that we don't see, it's in the earth yeah? and, and, and we can dig it up or we, it's the basis actually, or it's the source, let's say, it's not the basis, it's the source of um, all our health. Uh, it's the building uh -huh. blocks of our material world, of our body. Yeah, that's where yeah. the building blocks are uh, present and also a kind of a laborato laboratory for mm -hmm. a new life. Yeah? And it's a denser world, uh -huh. it's, it's a darker world. Uh -huh. And you can say, in a way, it is more simple. There are more simple um, substances and organisms there. Yeah. Uh -huh. compared to the third dimension. The third dimension, the surface of the earth, is where you have plants and animals. Yes. Right? yes. So, and humans, of course. So yes. our, <laughs> our remedies will be divided in, is it the second dimension substance we are looking for, or is it a third dimension um, uh -huh. substance we're looking for? And the third dimension substances are more complex. You could say there's a, a layer added, or, or even in the animal, like two layers eh, of mm -hmm. metal minerals. And they have a lot of things in common. They're more complex, they're more, um, how do you say, uh, multi-layered. Uh, 
Uh, yes. There are more aspects to it. And uh -huh. this will show itself in our cases. So uh -huh. if you see a patient, for me, it's helpful to determine first between is it the second dimension or is it a third dimension substance? If mm -hmm. you have if you have determined this, you know, for the third dimension, you know, you ha only have to differentiate between plants and animals, right? You have to look right. for a substance between those two kingdoms. If it's a second dimension, then you know it might be mineral, but it might also be a stone. It might also be a gemstone, mm -hmm. also sarcodes mm -hmm. and bacterium. I, to my understanding, a sarcode is also a very simple organism. It's either yeah. the, the gland uh, or the, the product of the gland, uh, the mm -hmm. hormone, and that in itself is a very simple substance. It does yeah. One mm -hmm. thing, yeah. it yeah. has one particular function, mm -hmm. right? and so the characteristics of these second dimension substances or cases, rather, I would say, is that they are kind of simple, like yes. they are kind of uncomplicated. It's like one issue. Yes, simple and in complexity. Yes, of course, all cases yeah. are you know have have, uh, um, have their complex. A gathering of information, mm -hmm. but yeah. as you gather it in the second dimension case, it will boil down to a very uh, condensed, like one liner almost. Yes. You can say this uh -huh. is the problem, and they tend to build up. You know, in the second dimension case, you get you ask a question, you get an answer, yeah, you know, which is which sounds logical, but it's not at all in the third dimension. You ask a question, you get the story. Uh -huh. Yeah. Or you get an example. The second yeah. dimension, different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You ask a question, you get an answer. You get an explanation that mm -hmm. makes it clear to you what exactly is meant. Yeah. See yeah. what I mean? Yes, yes, I do. And it sounds like uh, these would be also the cases that are the easier to to follow and to figure out as well. In a way, they are because they're building up. You know, and as you ask, you get more and more information and you understand it better and better. It's not all of a sudden something else mm -hmm. popping up. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same thing. <laughs> and in the end, you understand what is the issue because they, you know, described it in, in all ways from all angles. Mm -hmm. And you understand this is the problem, that second dimension case. Yeah. Uh -huh. Third dimension is a whole other story. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you used the you introduced this concept kind of as a as a higher as a higher order of classification that comes mm -hmm. before kingdoms of plants, Absolutely. yeah, animals and minerals and uh, sarcodes and nosodes and so on. Yeah. So it uh, it comes it's it is a step in analysis before, um, yeah choosing a kingdom for the for the remedy yes even before kingdom exactly that's what i'm saying because i think that is uh, um, uh, an easy to discern difference between the second and the third dimension so if people hesitate in choosing a kingdom i would say it is hard to hesitate between an animal and a mineral mm. they're so far apart even uh, you know, the whole realm of is different. The whole way of perceiving the world and themselves is so different. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Exactly. Yeah. And presenting themselves or presenting the case. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So let me put in a little side question that kind of ties into what you just said. Um, sometimes I find it difficult to to see, to decide whether this is uh, an animal case, uh, sorry, a mineral case or a plant case. According to the dimensions, this should be clearly separated. Yes, that's but true. But how do you see it? <laughs> <laughs> Normally there's no doubt, and if there's a doubt, uh, as far as I could see in my cases, it is because this combination of the plant-like sensitivity and people will say, I'm easily affected by this and that, or I cry easily, or I'm very sensitive to all criticism or hard words or whatever. 
So the sensitivity seems to be plant, the issue seems to be mineral. Most mm. of the time, this point, or almost sure, this point to a gemstone. Because yes, they have this mineral issue and some plant-like sensitivity. And this confuses us a lot. Yes, uh-huh, okay. All right. So this would, in that case, in that sense, would make it, uh, would be a pointer, yes? Would be an aid to, to knowing that this is a gemstone case. A reliable pointer, according okay. to Okay, all right. Okay. Um, so, in my analysis or in my case taking, once I see, all right, this is a second or this is a third dimension case. Um, I know at least to which kingdoms then I can limit my mm. further analysis or my further case taking. Mm -hmm. um, now, last time we spoke um, why it is sometimes, or what we can do if we know it's an animal case and we don't know which animal it is. Um, but, and, and also that, that we saw there are um, often prescribed animal remedies for, for example, children, because they behave in a, what we in, a, in an adult would perceive as an animal behavior, like a vivid expression or a very uh, direct express, expression of emotions and of impulses. Mm -hmm. But it might not always be so that they actually require a, an animal remedy. Um, and you mentioned there can be another difficulty in spotting or in knowing which animal it could be in case taking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the people often ask me, how, uh, how can you know which animal, uh, you know you're in animal kingdom and you don't know which one. Now what I've seen, if I like redo the case, um, that very often it's just not an animal. That's the problem. <laughs> that, so if you think you need an animal, but you're not in an animal kingdom, it's no wonder that you don't know which animal to choose. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so you just have, you know, you, you were led by some, some words, as we said last time, that there can be words in the story, not coming from the vital. And it's just um, an expression. Uh, and then you, you hear the words like survival or, or attack or whatever, defense or fight, or the words that made you think of an animal, but that's not an animal at all. It's just a story of a quarrel, which is uh, expressed by very common expressions uh, and doesn't point to an animal at all. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you're not an animal kingdom, it will be very hard to prescribe an animal or to find the right animal because you just don't need one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see, I see. So, yeah. um, in your experience, what would be an easy to confuse, or in, in which cases would this happen? Can you narrow it down to to families or to kingdoms or to substances? Or? Well, very often it has to do with the prejudices of the homeopath. So we mm -hmm. have ideas in our in our head, in our mind about certain animals. For instance. Um, spiders are restless. This is, as, as far as I can see, a mistake. Mm -hmm. uh, they are when they're active. But when they are not active, they are inert. And there's a chance that when you see a, like a grown-up spider case, that the patient will uh, rather complain of inertness and not doing anything than yeah. overactivity. Uh -huh. yeah. If they are active, they will do it in a kind of um, speedy way, like speedy yeah. dancing or speedy uh -huh. running or something. But in between, there can be complete uh, inertness. And I've seen lots of spiders, I mean, adult spider cases, yes. where the person is sitting absolutely motionless. And we, yeah. think, we think when they fiddle around with their hands and their feet, must be a spider. No. Yeah. <laughs> they're restless. That's yeah. the rubric is restlessness. It's yes. not spider. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a prejudice in our minds. Mm. Where you have this restlessness, that's something else, where it is appropriate, is an inner restlessness in insects. But very often they don't show it. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you can have a very, let's say, uh, composed um, APs or whatever. Yeah? You, they don't buzz around in your in your yeah. uh, office, but yes. they can have this inner restlessness, and they will tell uh-huh. you that inside uh-huh. they feel like like the, you know they feel uh, their blood moving or their veins moving or something. They have this. Uh-huh. You don't have you don't see it. And other ideas we have like we tend to idealize birds. I I hear often that the people think of you know the freedom loving and they have big visions and you know they're flying high and all those things. Well, it's not true. You know, you, if you if you see a duck or, or a, a goose case, they're not really flying high to start with. And or a then, dove, yeah. Yeah, a dove. For instance, a dove is barita like. Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. it's like a barita. You think yeah. it's backwards, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah, they're very sensitive. They're looking like it's in the books, like a combination of barita, carcinosin, and and um, staphylococcus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. if you if you can't choose between the three different <laughs> right? <laughs> if Columba, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but like this, this goose or the geese and the ducks, they're confused. They're, they're confused cases. They don't know where the head is, you know. Mm-hmm. They look mm-hmm. more or less like roaming around like headless chickens. It's not mm-hmm. this big vision and this sharp eye. And it, yeah. so this is our ideal idealizing. Or we it's think, kind of a stereotype, a stereotype, yes? Exactly, stereotypes. Yeah. Like dolphins are playful. So people like to be a dolphin. Well, you know, most of the time they're all very scared or very yeah. violent. You know, <laughs> not all of them are so nice to hang around with, you know. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, they have an, a memory like an elephant and we give them elephant or they're elegant like a cheetah, like a big cat and big cat. And these are our prejudices. It's in our imaginary, mm. in the head of the homeopath. That's in the way. It sees an animal or it sees a wrong animal, let's say. Yes. Or, uh-huh. on the other hand, and that is a bit funny, but it's not so funny for the patient, but how can you give a worm to a patient you like? See? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. So we think that insects and all this, you know, these creepy creatures, they can't be nice people. Yeah. Exactly. So that's, yeah. that's a prejudice. Of course they're nice people. That's a human uh, evaluation or, or preference and that we also project onto remedies then, yeah. Exactly. So you, how can you give a cockroach yeah. to, to a nice woman? Can mm. you do this? Yeah. How can yeah. you give a, a lice? Yeah. I yeah. had a patient once, he said, so you think I'm a jellyfish? I said, <laughs> no, I don't think you're a jellyfish. <laughs> you clearly are not a jellyfish. <laughs> it's a remedy, but I don't think yeah. you you are a jellyfish yeah. in daily life or, or, or leech. How can you give a leech to somebody? Mm. It's so it's it's our prejudices and our wrong perceptions, our yes. projections, yeah, are very it, much in the way. <laughs> we take it some. We take it in according to what you say. Even as a judgment of the patient, it's the giving a remedy is not a judgment. In the, no, uh, if if they require a certain substance, it's not a. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's not a judgment of their personal or of their exactly of their being. Yeah. Yes. So these would be things that we can take for animals, yeah? And have you noticed any particular relationship or particular uh, class of remedies that we, that we confuse animal cases with, that we take for animal cases? That are not, you mean? That are not, exactly. That are not. Mostly in the, um, I think, in the case of, let's say, a plant, mm. because they share the same third dimension. So yeah. it is the right dimension. Plants are also vivacious. Yeah. Uh, uh, they have this connection with the homeopath. So you have this, uh, um, most of the time, and they're not too compensated, you have this uh, lively interaction. Mm-hmm. And it, it, Plants for sure, because they, you know, they connect with everybody and everything. Mm-hmm. But we have this idea, like animals are charismatic, you know, and they, um, they um, uh, attract your attention, which mm-hmm. they do. They do. They tr- attract your attention by 
very often by their stories. They have these interesting stories somehow, you yeah. know. They, <coughs> you get carried away with their stories. Mm -hmm. But this can happen with plants as well, as right. plants are storytellers and, and they give you one example after the other and they give you images and, and pictures and associations and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, they can easily be confused with yeah. uh, animals and <laughs> let's say a plant having a fight oops there you go <laughs> exactly exactly this makes it so difficult no mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah well in fact not because uh, we said before in a plant case it is a, an, um, a particular sensitivity in the patient mm -hmm. in an animal case the other is the problem and that's a very clear differentiation if you have a quarrel in a plant is i can stand him screaming at me see yeah. and if it's an animal case is the bastard shouldn't do this <laughs> he's the problem yeah he's dominating me he's yeah. you know basically shouting yeah so in the first case it's i'm i can't stand it yes and in the second case in the animal case it is he's wrong He's the mm. problem. He's the cause of my suffering. Yeah. It's not yeah. me. It's uh -huh. him. Yeah. So the same story will be experienced in a different way. Mm -hmm. Even if both saying we're fighting, you know, attacking and defending, you know, and, and violence and whatnot, yeah. <laughs> the experience will be different. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. That will lead me to another question but we keep that for the next time mm -hmm. um, because then it would be interesting to see um, what, what are the, well what, what are in your experience clear po clearer pointers to to uh, plan cases in general yes. but this is something for uh, for another chat that's good. Let's go into plants the next time. There's one more thing I, I think I need to add. Yes. Um, uh, as I have a, hopefully a help in animal cases. Mm -hmm. um, the information needs to come spontaneously. I have to emphasize this again and again and again. If it doesn't come spontaneously, it is not reliable. It doesn't mean it's wrong. Yeah. But we're not sure. And if we're not sure, how can we base a prescription? We, because of our questioning, we are in doubt. Yeah. So even if you really are tempted to ask questions about a particular animal or mm -hmm. um, uh, a preference, for instance, I would either not do it or do it at the very, very, very last question that yeah. you have in your con in your conversation you know and also in encouraging the patients to to go into you know deep in themselves and then see what comes up very often an animal comes up we, mm. i think we said that before and it is yeah. because of our questioning the patient wouldn't have come up with that him or herself that's what yes. i mean we, by questioning by leading them and this is something we would never do like leading our patient in a certain direction the patient thinks that this is what expected from him and he yeah. goes into his imagination and in his associations mm -hmm. and in that world there's bound to come up an animal yeah, yeah. he yeah. won't come up with a buttercup i told you before he won't associate with whatever flower that he cannot even you know pronounce the name of yeah. exactly <laughs> yeah. or a, a, a bit of white powder natrium mariaticum or a, <laughs> he won't, no. so most likely he will come up with an animal and it is because we asked him and then we asked for the qualities of this animal and then more imagination will come and all this imaginary will lead us to what we think is a source case while it's sheer imagination mm -hmm. yeah and that is also a mistake that is often make made because of you know the sensation method in itself is very good and very reliable as long as you know when it when the information comes from the vital the sensation level or not mm -hmm. yeah and how do you know when you don't ask it 
Yeah. <laughs> then it comes so just from to be, myself. Yeah. Just to be perfectly clear, mm. what is spontaneous for you? Is spontaneous information? Mm -hmm. What is spontaneous? Well, you ask your questions as yeah, I know it's everybody says so, as open as possible. But I mean, you can make your consultation resemble a quite normal talk. Not this very, we're going to do something special, we're going in deep, 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 deep down, looking for something you'll never dug up. No, you know, the, the vital sensation of the patient is written from, from head to toe. It is his vital sensation. There's no way not to express it. Mm -hmm. It is there, it's only up to us to keep the patient long enough in our office for us to spot it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing actually we should do. Mm -hmm. And of course, what we do is we show real, deep interest in what is exactly your problem, what is exactly your suffering. You can tell me. I take all the time to understand. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as the patient feels, we have no prejudice, no psychological explanation. It's because this of that, this or that reason that you feel that way. We have no judgment and we have real, genuine interest and total attention. It will show. Yeah. We don't have to ask fancy questions. Yeah. <laughs> Just ask me, how is it for you? How do you feel? Can you tell me a little bit more? Is it this and that what you said? Do I understand you well? And let them add a little bit to it, explain it a bit better, say a bit more about it. If you feel like there's an unclear area in this explanation, ask for it. Mm -hmm. and as for examples, and until you got it, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Great. All right. Thank you very much for this one. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay. we will continue next Friday with more questions. Of course. Fine. I'll be delighted. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, Joseph.